you guys. So I spent all day muscling through this publishing process and I've got it done. The people are already asking me, I wish I knew what it was about. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna read it to you. This is my children's story that I wrote in 2009 for my oldest daughter. It's called Bubbles Had a Magic Wand. Bubbles had a magic wand, a gift when she was small. She held her secret close to her so no one knew it all. Is with a magic wand. Miss Bubbles had an attitude. She sometimes acted mean. The tricks she played were magic tricks she did when she was unseen. We got a picture of her using her wand to hurt somebody. Those are banana peels under his feet but I didn't really flesh them out. Oh, there's a banana pun. I'm realizing you probably can't see the pictures because it's the paper and the light, but. One summer night, the breeze was sweet. Bubbles sat upon her swing and counted the fireflies' bright lights, thinking what the night might bring. And there she is on her swing, daydreaming. I had a swing just like that when I was little, except it did not have palm trees. With a glitter-filled cloud and a faint rumble-bumble, with a bang and a pop and a slight bumble-tumble, her fairy godfather rolled out of the cloud with a frown on his face and a, girl, you're in trouble. Uh-oh. Everybody needs a fairy godfather. Y'all them, don't they? This playing of tricks on your friends is unkind. What kind of friend hurts another without thought? If you don't listen up, the wand will be mine. Even if you're sneaky, you will be caught. Uh-oh. Somebody's in trouble. She at least has the decency to look a little bit guilty. I love you quite dearly. Always have, always will. I know you'll do the right thing because you know the drill. And with that, he threw some magic dust from his pocket, disappearing into the night like a fairy bottle rocket. like Mr. Rogers. The splash of LeVar Burton. The next day, Bubbles was filled with goodwill, but she never expected it to be such a chore to do what was right and make Godfather proud, biting her tongue and leaving her wand at the door. Tucked in among the umbrellas. The school day was long, the hours dragged on. Oh, the tricks she would have played to make time go by quicker. She sat at her desk instead with her hands by her sides, her mischief in bay while she paid attention to her teacher. Somebody took their real in today. Judo, judo. <laughs> The playground was ripe with situations to ruin. She stood by the fence, chewing her nail in frustration. A little girl tapped her shoulder and Bubbles turned to face her. Would you like to play some tag? The girl asked. We need one more to be a chaser. That's Bubbles and her little friend Felicity. And when they turn 21, they grow up to be strippers. Because it's obviously Vegas. Everybody's a stripper in Vegas, at least once. Bubbles never had any friends. 
She never played a game. She was always busy with her wand, keeping her own company. At first, she couldn't hold her own, but soon she played along just as, she always, as if she always had, as the girl she never knew she could be. That afternoon, walking home from school, she thought about her day and how much fun she'd had at school learning how to play. A smile sat upon her face as she went along her way. No wicked thoughts about her wand tried ruining her play. Look at that smile. Must have been concerted because that lasts longer. Attention is such a lovely thing. When she got home, she took her wand out and sat and thought some more about how magic should be used for good, not playing tricks and such. Imagination filled her mind with stuff, the good things that were in store for all the people everywhere her good magic could reach out and touch. Obviously, lotus position, a very mindful child. With a glitter-filled cloud and a faint rumble-bumble, with a bang and a pop and a slight bumble ker it, her fairy godfather rolled out of the cloud with a grin on his face and a, by Jove, you've got it. He's so happy. So happy, and that mustache. I am so proud of the lesson you've learned. You've proven I've made a very good choice. My goddaughter has a smart brain in her head and a conscience that echoes my voice. One of my favorite doodles in the whole world. Our brains are magical. The wisdom in thinking how your actions affect others is wisdom that will save you a mess. The wisdom to know that you can say sorry when you hurt someone is wisdom that will always be priceless. The wisdom in knowing how to be kind is the wisdom that will serve you the best. My girl, you have earned the gifts of the wand, but know that the wand was never the magic. The magic of mischief and the magic of goodness have always been locked in your woodness and goodness. If you had not been willing to learn, the end of this story would have been tragic. So to all the little boys and little girls who read this and think that it's silly, waving their wands all willy-nilly, remember that it is you who has the power to change. Use those smart little brains and don't be a ninny. And watch out for those glitter clouds that bear rumble bumbles. For a fairy godparent is coming and you might be in trouble. The last page of my book is a dedication. This book is dedicated to Miss Trinity and her magic wand, my Azzy, who has forever carried a big stick, and my own bit of magic, without which I would be nothing. So, yes, I wrote this story when I was in school for my creative writing degree, and it's been sitting in storage, waiting for I don't know what, but this is a project I'm very proud of. It's a story that means a lot to me. That was a difficult time in my life, and uh, not one that I told many people about, but I have some stories from back then that I really love, this being one of them. And um, my daughters are as glorious as the magic wands they were born with. <laughs>